Well, my SIM card ran out of juice the other day and I had to uh, download all that stuff and now I'm okay. See, there's the one that I installed. I was just getting done installing this here, tightening that up, then I had to put I had to put those on and, and it's it's real easy to do. There's just some little Allen wrench type little set screws that you tighten up and check it out. Let's let's hit this. Remember this is a single pole light switch and I told you it would probably turn on both of those at the same time. You only need a single pole light switch for that. Okay, look at that. Okay, there you go. I think those turned out really good. Okay, and what am I going to talk about today? Look at this. I even went ahead and installed this one over here. How's that look? It kind of looks good right there. Ah, that looks a little bit better. See how it gives off light like that? Look at that. That's nice. And see, that one was tied in to the one that went down the hall, went down the uh, stairwell. And see, I just used that, that round one like that. And it was, it was kind of, the light was coming out at the tip on both ends. So when you walk down the stairs, this light was shining right at you or walking up the stairs. And before I thought about putting the dimmer, I put some duct tape on the end of it. I put two layers of duct tape. Look at this. Uh, and then I trimmed it off and I did that on both ends. And you know, I was going to put duct tape on the end of this and up on the top, especially over here. I could do, I could have done that, but I think, I'm pretty sure that these will dim if I change out this light switch. So that's what my project is today. I'm going to take this out and remember I had a dimmer switch in this room that I'm not using now. Oh, the lights. Ah. We'll get we'll just turn the we'll just get some light in here, huh? Okay, here's my dimmer switch I'm going to use. This is a single pole dimmer switch because I'm not using it for the ceiling fan because it, you, there used to be a light fixture there for the dimmer. And I changed, and this is the power switch now for the ceiling fan. That's off, that's on, and then there's a little remote control here uh, to turn the, turn the fan on, turn the light on, and all that good stuff. Okay. And I don't need that, so I'm going to take this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm basically going to swap. I'm going to put the other light switch over here and I'm going to take this one and put it over here. And we're going to see once and for all if these will in fact dim. I'm pretty sure they will. And if they do, then that's going to be a good thing. Then I won't have to put any masking tape on the ends because these, these uh, wall sconces are supposed to be for... Uh, you know, ambiance type light, not as much light as they're putting off. And if the dimmer, if the dimmer works, then guess what? These two, I can put on a dimmer switch too. And this is a three-way switch. This one here is a three-way. This, this switch is controlled by that switch down there too. And I'll put a three-way dimmer switch and, uh, Replace that and I probably won't do it here. See how these are lit up So at night if it's dark and we want to go down the stairs We don't have to fumble around for the light switches and so I'll probably go ahead and put the dimmer switch down there For that and then I've got another one of these lights to put in and I'm gonna get the cylinder type one like that And I'm gonna put that right here facing vertical and that one is tied in with this light switch and that light switch for this light up here, see? Right there, I can control that right here and I can also control it there. And it's, it controls this up here too. So if I put a dimmer switch on there, 
I can dim that and I can dim this at the same time. And see, this is a warm white light bulb, okay? All these other ones, well, let's get this back on. I'll turn that on, get these other lights on. See, these aren't warm white. This is like a bright, cool white. And so if I wanted to, if I wanted all these to match, I could take this one out and get a different type of bulb. Get the cool white, bright white uh, light bulb there and uh, connect, it, connect it over to this switch here. And if I have the dimmer on, at least this and that will be the same light. See, there's always all kinds of different things you can do, okay? So that's what my video is actually going to be about today. Changing out this to a dimmer switch. You want to watch that? Stick around. So what's the absolute first thing I have to do with this light switch? Do you remember? Yes. We've got to, we've got to turn it on and then I've got to find the associated breaker in the electrical panel. I've got the power switch on for the ceiling fan and I'm going to turn the light on. I keep thinking, that's funny, I keep thinking the bottom one's the light. Okay, I'm just going to leave that on and I'm going to hit breakers. Hopefully both of them are on the same breaker. If not, I'll, I'll just back and forth, up and down the stairs I go until I get things situated and get these lights turned off. Okay, first step, do not, and I repeat, do not work on light switches or electrical items when the power is on. Okay, I got lucky. One breaker, and that was it. And the first one. Because on your electrical breakers, generally it'll have written on there generically what the breaker's for. Obviously, it can't it can't name every single little thing. So you have to take an educated guess and stuff. Okay, so this is the first thing you want to do. Take your cover plates off. And I'm going to take this one off and I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go in the other area and take the other light, fit, light switch cover plate off as well. Now something important to realize, am I a licensed electrical contractor? No, and you don't have to be a professional electrician either. As long as you got the power off, you should be okay. The mounting screws on here and uh, it's a good thing I, sh I should check that one too because that light switch was for the utility room where the washer and dryer is. And um, every once in a while, believe it or not, did you know you could have more than one circuit in a switch location? In fact, I had one one time uh, in the kitchen, in my kitchen, and there was three circuits in there, I had three individual circuit breakers I had to turn off because one was for a light, one was for a garbage disposal, and one was for uh, a GFI electrical outlet. And all of those were on different circuits. So every once in a while, you gotta check. Okay, so I'm checking this one here, no power to that. So I know there's no power to this electrical box, okay? So take it out like that. And see, there's, there's some side screws there. So all I'm gonna do is undo those screws. See, there's a couple screws there. And um, I'm looking at this. There's two screws over here and then the ground screw over on that side. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna undo that. And see, I can do it a couple different ways. I can take the screw out all the way if I want. Like 
that and get the wire out. I can do that or I can cut it. I can cut it with my wire cutters. I can do that too. Because see these wires stick out plenty far and so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these ends. Okay. And my ground wire is plenty long. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that too. Okay, now it's gonna be easier for me to work on. If your if your wires were really super short, I wouldn't advise you uh, to cut the wires off. I would advise you to undo the screws, you know, up there by the box and all that. Okay. So now I've got to, I've got to, see, I still have to take the screws off and take the wire off. And sometimes the curly Q is on there. You got to get a little screwdriver and bend that up out of the way before you get a bigger screwdriver on there and just use the end to, to tilt the wire and open up the wire further. Okay. And then it, and then it will, will come off without taking this screw off. Okay. Oh, I better, I better put the other screw in here. And, and this one, this one, I'm not necessarily going to hook it all up in the other room. And I'll explain that to you uh, when we get there. Good Lord. I'm having a hard time getting that screw in there. There we go. Because you remember on the other one, if you were watching, I don't know if you were watching me install that ceiling fan or not in this room. But um, that ceiling fan, uh, the wiring used to be different. There used to be a light fixture up here. And the light fixture was controlled by this dimmer switch. Well, and then this one was controlled uh, for a red wire that was above where the light fixture was in case somebody were going to install a ceiling fan there from years ago rather than a light fixture they would have hooked it up and um, hooked up the ceiling fan to a standard switch here and a standard switch here. This one would have activated the light kit on the ceiling fan and this one would have been the power for the light for the, for the uh, ceiling fan. Well since they didn't install a ceiling fan they decided to put a dimmer switch here and make this the main power for the ceiling fan <laughs> for, for the uh, uh, for the light fixture. They made this the main power for the light fixture and they put a dimmer switch. Well now, 15 years later, I decided to install, I took the light fixture down because I painted the ceiling and then we decided let's put a ceiling fan up there so we have a ceiling fan in this room and a light. And they tell you not to put it on a regular light dimmer switch. And so I thought, how can I do that? So we had the red wire that was still up there for the light kit, so I used that power. And now this is the power switch right here for the ceiling fan. And the ceiling fan, you never have to mess with that. Just leave that on at all times, okay? Then you control everything with this handheld remote. So once I take this out, um, I can cap off the wires and I could just screw this right in there. Um, and not even have it hooked up because right now nothing is happening to this right now the main black power w wire that's up there we put a wire wire nut up there electrical tape over that shove that up in the ceiling we're not even using that okay so when I take that out I don't even have to hook this one back up do I okay so now I've got to take this apart Okay, you with me so far? Stick around. This is just part of this project. It's, you know, if I had a, a dimmer switch, I wouldn't have to really do this. I could go down to the store and get one, but why? This dimmer switch will work fine there. 
Have you priced dimmer switches lately? I mean, depending on which one you get at the store, you can spend between, oh, I'd say $12 and $18, $20 for a dimmer switch. And this one's going to work fine. I say it's going to work fine. I hope that those lights will work with the dimmer. And when I read on there, it said that you could install a dimmer. Okay. It did say, check your local authority, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, see this one? I just have to be careful pulling the wires out. And I know that the power is off. Okay. So, these two, see, two black wires and the ground wire. And that's how I have to hook up the other. See, here we go. Now those are black wires, just has some paint on there. So, so feasibly, all I have to do is take the electrical tape off and um, take the wire nut off the wire nuts and then I could just if I want I could just put those um, the wire nuts back on and just leave those capped off in there right behind the light switch I don't have to hook this back up at all and that's what I'm that's what I plan on doing okay so I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull this tape off and I'll be right back <laughs> okay, I didn't want you to have to see me fuss around with that, with those, uh, with that tape. Okay, so I'm just going to take these wire nuts off. Let's see if I can't do them left-handed. Okay, just like that. And I don't know if this has power in or power out. Um, we'll have to we'll have to check that out and see because sometimes you'll see power in power out and I'm not gonna I, I could have turned up uh, I could have turned the uh, the power back on to see but I, I don't really know this one there might not be a difference it might just be uh, black to black and black to black you know what I mean? And so I am not going to rehook up this light switch. But if I was, what would I do? I would just hook one black wire to one screw, one black wire to the other screw, and the ground wire to the the ground screw. And then I would have to check on this and make sure I've got it facing up. And on all standard single pole light switches, there is a top and bottom. I look up here, it's hard to see. There's a P there. There's a T-O-P. Okay? Because you wouldn't want it installed upside down, even though it's a single pull. Ah, oh, yeah, what difference does it make? Well, all of them have, have should be up because the standard way for a standard single pull light switch is when you when you hit the bottom, that's off. And when you push that, that's on. Okay? And that's only for single pull because three-way light switches. Um, there is no, well, I think there is maybe a top and bottom on those, but um, on one, this is going to be on. On another one, that's going to be off, you know. And so, what am I going to do with this? I am simply going to put wire nuts back on here and on the ground wire. I could just leave the ground wire rough in there, right? I could if I wanted and I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna put some electrical tape on there. And on these, I'm gonna cut that back a little bit because when I, when I put this on there, this is stripped back so far that when I saw, when I was taking this off, I could see a little bit of the, of the stripped wire exposed beyond this wire nut. You don't want to do that because you push it back in there. If it hits something else, you never know what's gonna happen, and you want that covered 
Okay, so I'm just going to cut this back a little bit and um, before I put the orange wire nuts back on there. Okay, and I might even do it just a hair more. Okay, like that. Well, we have, oh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch there showing. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. Not me being in the way. Okay. Okay, that one's that one's tight. Sometimes when you get it tight and you think it's supposed to be tight, you can keep spinning, spinning it. Like maybe the uh, wire nut is an old wire nut, and it's not tightening up all the way. See, I can keep spinning this one just a little bit and I could put a different wire nut on there if I wanted but I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna wrap this with electrical tape just like they had before that way it's not gonna come off like that and I'm gonna push those back into the box and I'm simply going to just screw this right back in the hole just to take up the blank space for um, the cover plate okay and if I didn't want to do that you know on the cover plate did you know you can buy inserts you can like like when that goes back up you can get an insert that fits in there and it's a little plastic insert and then you don't have to see that okay if you want it but I'm gonna put the light I'm gonna put the light switch back in there I have I have five or six of these that I changed out to dimmer switches uh, at another property and I saved all of the single pole light switches. So I have four or five of these separate. So whenever I need one, I just grab one out of my arsenal and, and put it in. Okay, but I know that I've got a, an extra light switch here in case I ever need it. Okay, and that's just what I'm gonna do for that. And that's gonna take care of that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that together right now and button up that hole. I wasn't going to show you this part, but I figure I might as well. I could put the electrical tape on there. Now I just, I just kind of straighten the wires out as best I can, a little bit. And I'm just going to fold it over and fold it over again. However I need to do it. Make sure I get it back there plenty far enough. Fold it. And you see, oh, maybe I should just push it. Okay, there we go. I'm pushing it in the back cavity there. And I'm going to take that, fold it, fold it again, push it in the back. I can try to keep my hands off the wall. I got to push back nice and snug so that I can put that right back on there. And I'm just going to screw that in. There's not going to be any power to this for the reasons why I explained. Presto spaghetti. -o. Okay, got that done. Hey, looks fine, doesn't it? And you know, probably what I should have done was not hook up up that at all, or just put the wire nuts on there or something. Then take the dimmer hook the dimmer up over there and then turn the breaker back on before I put everything back together. My loss will be your gain if that's if if that's the case. And see what I'll what I'll end up doing on this one here, I think what I'll do is take the take the dimmer switch and I'm gonna strip these wires back now and I'm just going to hook this up right here on the wall. I'm not going to do anything special for it before I figure out how to uh, get everything pushed back in. In fact, I probably don't even have to mess with the ground screw that much. Let's see, I'm just, I'm just straightening out, out the wire. Okay. And Lucky for me, I always have extra wire nuts available. 
So I'll, I'll strip this and grab some more wire nuts. The orange wire nuts. I like using the orange for this instead of yellows. Okay, that's all I gotta do. That, I'll grab some wire nuts and see, I used those wire nuts to cap off the other, in the other uh, box and I needed to do that. I could have taken those wires all the way back to where they were coming out of and then uh, you take the red wire nuts out of a bundle back in there in a couple of different areas, but that, that's too much of a hassle. I didn't really have to do that. Okay, stick with me. We'll get some wire nuts on here. Then I'll turn the power back on and see if these lights are going to dim. See, I carry all my nooks and crannies, my, my nooks and crannies, all of my extra little things, and anytime I collect some new uh, wire nuts and stuff, I'll put them in here, or I've got another little bag in there, I've got some new ones in there, and stuff, and I've got some orange wire nuts. I'm even gonna try a yellow, just for kicks, so that you can see the difference. See how small that hole is? See how the yellow, the hole's a little bit bigger. So, you don't want to get the wires. Uh, if your wires are too small, then you may have an issue. But these wires, you know, these are a little bit bigger. These are 12 gauge wires, they're not 14 gauge wires. So I think a yellow wire nut will work. And I'm just... I'm just twisting the stranded wire all together on here. Okay. See, you don't have to be an electrician to do this kind of stuff around your house. As long as you got the power off. And I'm just going to kind of start twisting that on the end like that. I got to pull this back far enough to get the wire nut on there without it getting in my way. See that yellow the yellow wire nuts just fine on there. But like I say, most most of the time when I put one stranded wire on a 14 gauge or 12 gauge, I use the orange wire nuts. Here we got the orange wire nut. Okay, and that works fine. Get it on there tight, pull on your stranded wire your, your little wire to make sure it's not going to come out because sometimes you think the wire is tight and then you pull on that a little voice will tell you hey check that because video joe says to check it every once in a while and it might surprise you one of these times you're going to put a wire nut on and it's not going to hold happens every once in a while Usually on something if you've got two wires coming out or three wires and you're hooking a stranded wire to that or something, you know, different type of application. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm going to turn the power back on and then I've got to hold this and see if it's going to work. I'm going to leave that off so that you can see what I see. And there wasn't anything that said uh, power in, power out or anything like that. But worst case scenario, if something happens and uh, if I'm not getting the right power in here, I could swap these out back and forth to see, but I don't really think I'm going to need to on this particular light switch. Okay, all right, so I'm going to turn the breaker back on and be right back. Okay, Scout's Honor, I have not tried that yet. I've got the power back on because when I hit this switch, We've got, see that light fixture and the, and the exhaust fan come on at the same time. I still try to be careful with this when I don't have a, a cover plate on. My ceiling fan is working and it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with this when it has everything to do with that. That's the main power. If I turn that off right now, the light's going to go off. Okay. And the power, all the power goes off to that. 
And if I turn that back on, the light, oh hey, the light will come on because the light was on uh, on this remote when I turned that off. Okay, let's turn this light off. Okay, and that's, I'm gonna turn the ceiling fan off. And when I turn this off, if I turn that back on, the light should not come on. See? I got the power on. The only time that light's going to come on now is when I hit that. And it only, it only came back on now. See, because I turned that switch off when this light was on. Does that make sense? Okay, enough of that. You didn't really come here to uh, see about this, did you? Our main thing. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm crossing my fingers. You're going to see what I see when I turn this dimmer on. I'm going to keep it in the high. Uh, I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, I got it on. And look at that. It does work. I've got it high all the way. And now I'm going to turn it down. Look at that. I am liking that. I am so happy that these LEDs dim. That's amazing. I've done it by Joe. <laughs> and it's funny too, this dimmer, this dimmer here, I could see, I think, I think it's a lit, yes it is, it's a lit dimmer. So at night, it's going to light up and, um, you see the top of this? See, uh, see right there? Look at that. That means it's a lit dimmer. I didn't really have to have a lit dimmer. You can get them at the store, lit or unlit, on your dimmer switch. Okay? So if you want one in a particular area that you don't want to probe around, like I put some lit dimmer ones, uh, or actually uh, just a lit light switch in the garage let's say that always comes in handy you open up the garage and, and you want to turn the light on out there and you can't see and it's dark and you're trying to put some stuff in the garbage can or something and uh lit yeah so you can get standard light switches that are lit you know you get a standard light switch these these happen to be three-way light switches but see how it's lit there? You, you can see that, see? And, and this one's lit too. Oh, you can't always get those. Okay, so, so that tells me, what does that tell me? That first off tells me uh, I'm gonna put all that back in and now um, before, I, before I forget, I gotta remember, don't, don't forget to turn the power back off. So I'm gonna go back, turn the power off, so I can push those all back in. And should I put electrical tape on here? Because I have electrical tape, I'm going to, but you don't necessarily have to. It's, it's just something that some people do whenever they put wire nuts on. And remember when we took this out in the other room, it had uh, some electrical tape. It doesn't take very long to put a couple strips, zips of that around there. And then I can push that back in and be all done. I'll show you that in a minute. But see, that tells me that um, I should be able to get a three-way dimmer. And I know I can because I've seen them at the store and I've installed them before. That means these two will dim. That means my, my little uh, duct tape that I put on yesterday right here at the end, I may end up pulling that off on that end and down at the other end. Um, and I just did that just to see how well it would work, you know. And uh, I'm probably going to be able to pull that out off now. Because you can see how bright these get and how dim I can get them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this on again. See how bright that is? And look how low I can dim that. That's nice. That, now for ambiance, late at night... And, you know, for the last couple hours of evening, 
if you want them just dimmed like that, I, I think that looks kind of nice. And then I can dim that one here, I can dim this one, I can dim that one, or whatever, okay? Gives you plenty of options. And these LED lights, um, it's, it's something that they've come out recently with, and the little bulbs are in a strip in here, all inside this cavity here, uh, uh, up against in there. And so if these ever burned out, uh, you cannot replace that. You might be able to uh, save the directions. In fact, uh, uh, I think I threw, uh, I threw away the three boxes for those, but I saved, I saved the box for this one here. And they're from the same manufacturer. I'll have to look at that before I throw that box away and save the little manual, uh, the, the um, directions and stuff, because you might be able to order if that ever burns out, say it burns out 10 years from now and you and 10 years from now you still love these things. Maybe you can get the replacement housing bit that fits inside of there. I know other light fixtures you can and uh, like for the ceiling fans, like for the ceiling fan, this this light is the same way. It's it's got all this this goody stuff inside. There's no real light bulb that you can unscrew and replace when it burns out because this is LED light and that whole little round section if it ever burns out years down the road I can I can uh, order another one from the manufacturer and they'll send it out here you undo a couple screws pull it out and of course you've got to redo a couple of wire harness pieces and that kind of stuff but it should unclip fairly easy and then you can and then you can replace that. So the owner's manual booklets for the ceiling fans, yes, I've saved those. And probably for light fixtures, you probably should save those too, especially if, if you got the LED style and if those lights ever burn out, okay? And you know, LED lights and so forth and, and the ceiling fan, they have warranties on it too. So look at that, read that. I, I know for the ceiling fan, there was a, a I think it said lifetime, it was funny. It said limited lifetime warranty, and I'm like, what the heck are they talking about? Read the directions and stuff, and it might include your light working for for the next 10 years. And if it doesn't, you would have to send, you would have to call them, you'd have to save your receipt, you'd have to uh, uh, send it back to them, and and if you can prove to them if you know how old your ceiling fan is, the manufacturer's number or serial number, or whatever, in there. Um, they might give you the, the, the little kit for free, you know, or if something goes wrong with your ceiling fan, uh, there's, a, there's a warranty on it. And you might, have, you might get warranties for these kind of light fixtures too, okay? Check it out, but I am sure glad these dim. Okay, so now I'm gonna go turn the light uh, breaker off in the garage and incidentally the breaker was a 20 amp breaker and that's why these wires were 12 gauge wires okay I was checking that out when I was installing these because on that particular one I had to use some pigtails and I was pretty sure that the breaker was a 20 amp breaker and in fact it was and I'm glad I used the pigtails of 12 uh, 12 gauge wire rather than the 14 for that. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's on my channel in the same area where you're finding this one. If you can't find it, you can always go to my YouTube channel, main page, click on playlists, and then scroll down to everything electrical or something like that, and you'll find them. It'll be there. Okay. Okay, all the power's off. Just was double checking to make sure. And these these little mounting screws came with a little washer goodie, you know, just a little cardboard deal on the back side. I'm thinking I might I'll just push it back on there. You don't have to do that. But since they're there. I'm gonna push them on. Okay. 
This is facing up. Oh, that's right. I've got to put uh, my, my electrical tape on there. It usually, whenever I tell you I'm going to do something, I do it, even if I'm not on video at the time. Just so you know, I don't just say stuff and then not do it. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to be careful with not banging on the wall too much, but you know, I just painted, I just painted here, and this is eggshell finish. It's kind of like a, a knockdown version of a semi-gloss, the next one down, I believe. And so it's okay, but if this was if this was flat paint. I'd have to be more wary because if this starts sliding around on the wall, you could put a mark on it and then you might not be able to get it off on paint, on flat paint, especially if, you're, especially if your wall's like five years old of paint, let's say, okay? I'm just going to pull this out a little bit and... Uh, Hold this away from the wall as I'm doing it here, if I can. Okay. <laughs> and should I do the ground wire? I, I don't know. I'm gonna do it just, just for kicks. And this is the, this is like one of the first times I'm using my electrical tape for a while on, on. Uh, wall wire connections but hey you can do it like I said or not do it okay so now I've got to push that and snake it in as best I can because this is a little bit deeper than a standard light switch not by very much some some used to be way deeper than that, and, and sometimes you'll get them that are deeper. Okay, so you've got to be careful with that. And make sure you get enough room to where you feel comfortable that this is, is not putting any pressure on the wires as you try to screw this back in, because you got to remember these screws are only going into plastic threads in the plastic box. You know what I mean? And that's why I do it by hand and I do it by feel when I get it fairly snug and I want to make sure this is going to tweak over straight and it's going to nice and easy. Okay. I don't like using a power drill for this because you could get that in there and have a tendency of stripping uh, the thread area in the plastic box. Now see, as I'm going, this thing's kind of coming out, so I'm going to pull this out a little like that. I can take that kind of twist on it. You know, that way when I screw it back in, it should go in straight. You see what I mean? That's my pet peeve. I like to make sure that this thing goes in straight and the cover plate fits on there nice and clean. With the reveal edges all the way around your light switch being flush with your light switch cover plate. Because, it's e because if you don't get it in there straight, this side could be flush, this side, this side could be sticking out, or one side could be flush and another side could be pushed in to the cover plate, let's say. Do you see what I mean? And so I'll take note on that before I screw the cover plate on. I'll look at that and see if I need to do anything. This, this almost looks like I need to push it over a little bit. I like, I like to make sure everything's up nice and straight. And if you had a wall, you could measure off the wall. 
over to an edge or to the center of a, a fixture or to the edge of it. Now, now I'm right there where I need to be on that one. And see, I didn't really touch this one other than slide that. So I did touch it. And before I sink, cinch that down, I'll just hold the, the cover plate on there and see what I have to do. See, this one here has to be slid over quite a ways. You know, like, like that. And even if that wasn't far enough, What would I what would I then do? Would be take this one and slide it over. See, so so you can adjust you can adjust these all kinds of different ways. Oh yeah, that's looking nice, right? Like that. And this is this is the hard plastic vinyl. Well, it's hard plastic. Uh, it's not that vinyl one. And so I have to be careful not to cinch these screws in too tight because I could crack this. With the vinyl ones, usually you won't crack anything. You'll dimple, you'll push this in. So you have to be careful not, still not to go in too tight with the vinyl ones because, because then you'll see that dimple, you know, if you're really looking. So I'll be careful with that when I screw it in and we'll call it good, okay? So, and then I'll turn the lights back on and we'll be good to go. Well, there you go. Let's have you look at that. See there? It basically looks like we never did anything. Like those switches have been there since day one of this condo, but you and I know that's not the case, right? And I'm glad it turned out nice, and I'm glad to see that these LED-style light fixtures do, in fact, dim. Okay, well, that's all I have for this time. But I'll be back with more videos. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to talk about next time. But I'll find something to show you. Ah, the $100,000 question. How much would an electrician charge you to install a dimmer switch? Let's say you had the dimmer switch in the other room. You didn't think you were using it. And he swapped it out just like I did. You know how much he would charge you? I'm going to guess, and this is, pro this is an educated guess, 95 bucks. To $105 he charge you now if he had to come out and talk to you the first time and see what you wanted and decide he needed a, a switch a dimmer switch and he had to go to the store and pick up the materials and come back and and he's got two trips out here and he might charge you 125 bucks to install to take one light switch out and install a dimmer switch you know you might want to think twice about it and start figuring out, hey, Joe's making some sense here. Maybe I should try to figure out how to do some of these things on my own. He made it look pretty easy. He's not an electrician. And I didn't mess with any hot wires, did I? Not a one. Okay? Well, that's something you want to learn. Go to my YouTube channel, my main page. Uh, scroll or click on playlists. Scroll down to everything electrical or electrical know-how or whatever I've got it titled in all my electrical videos that I've ever posted on this channel you'll find there. Other than maybe ceiling fan, electrical for, for wiring up ceiling fans and stuff, you might find that under the ceiling fan playlist, the ceiling fans galore or, or all about ceiling fans, or what, however I've titled it, okay? And click on some of those, grab yourself a bowl of popcorn, some coffee, get in your favorite armchair, and check out all the different things I teach you on electrical. I don't just, I don't just slam bam, thank you ma'am. I explained as I go 
why I do the things that I do and for what reason and so forth and so on. You're getting, you're learning from listening for my explanations as well as my doing, okay? And just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Well, now that I know that that dimmer switch is gonna work for these types of light fixtures, I gotta make myself a material list. I know I need to get a dimmer uh, three, uh, oh, what do you call it? A three-way light switch dimmer. And then I've gotta decide, do they have a three-way light switch dimmer uh, that's lit like this one? Do I really care if it's lit on that three-way? I don't necessarily have to because, see, I would be changing that one there because this is a the three-way for this light. And I'm going to leave that one there because it's already lit. And my three-way dimmer switch I can just put here. And I can decide, I guess, if, it, if I want it lit or unlit because if it's late at night and we come out here and I don't want to fish around for this, I just see the little orange dot on there and I can see where the dimmer is and I don't have to get my grubby handprints all over the wall. So I've got to get, I've got to get one for that. I've got to get one for these other lights over here. This is a three-way. With, there's a three-way switch down there and there's this one here and this one's lit This is lit for the three-way for up above and so I'll get the dimmer switch and put down there and maybe I'll get a, a Non illuminated one for that who knows you know, so I'll start writing those things down So next time I go to the store I can get them and I need to get another one of those cylinder ones. That's kind of cool, huh? And it's kind of tricky how I was able to do it at the angle like that. And I'm going to put one here and that's going to go vertical because I've got this one over here vertical. There's always a rhyme or reason when you install things. And we made these two going horizontal. You know, just to kind of break up the monotony, so to speak. Okay? So the beauty of, of things like this you can start deciding how you want to do things in your house. Maybe you got some crummy light fixtures in here and you want to up, upgrade them, update them. You can do that. No problem. I've got light fixtures, other kind of light fixtures, bathroom fixtures and stuff uh, on my channel. In fact, I've got to install one into here. And when I do that, of course, I'll make a video of it. And speaking of of installing light fixtures in a bathroom. I've got another bathroom down here. It's a half bath and we were racking our brains what we were going to do with it for light fixtures. And you see, holy cow, we got a toilet here that's got to be installed eventually. I've got a pedestal light uh, or pedestal sink that's got to be installed here. And see how they had they had this mirror here, so I, I took that down before I painted. And you see how they have lights. They had a light on both sides, and I didn't want to tear this out and, and put the light up higher and blank those off or reroute all the electrical and patch and, and spray texture and, and do all that kind of stuff. So we had to get something here for these. And um, I, we've got a couple, we've got a couple uh, different ideas over here. And we might put this little thin cylinder one up and I we got we got two other ones down here, too I can't even reach down in there to see what they look like. Oh It's like that and it only goes one direction because see I was thinking You see how close the mirror is To those lights if we got anything hanging down It might look like it's too close to this mirror and if we take the mirror down It's like what else are we gonna put there? Uh, we'd have to do, we'd have to get something even smaller, you see. So I was thinking about put, having the base and having the the light go just straight up, uh, 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 like that. And I think that's what we're gonna do. And I think that's the bottom one. But then uh, I thought if it was going down, it would have to be something very thin going down, uh, so it didn't over 
you know, make the uh, mirror look like it was out of place or like the mirror was too close to the light fixtures or that kind of stuff. Yes, of course, I'll, I'll make a video of that too. Uh, and anything that I do over here at this condo, I'm going to make a video. And what's the next thing I'm going to talk about? Well, I'm going to talk, I, I need to check something out on the deck. Momi put some lights, she, she had these lights strung up on the deck rail and then she plugged them in to a GFI electrical outlet out there and it wasn't working. And I'm not sure what's going on with that. So that's probably what I'm going to check next time. See you then. I got some figuring out to do. What is our video about today? You see these? These are little bulbs. Kind of like Christmas type bulbs, except they're round. Momi had them on this deck, on the rail, and she plugged them in. We got a GFI electric outlet out there, and it wasn't working. And she wanted me to check it out, and I told her, just leave them up there. Well, she pulled them all down, rolls it all back. She goes, it's not working, it's not working. Okay, and I thought, phooey on that. We got to figure this out. And look at that, nice, eh? And, uh... We thought, I thought, I got to figure this out. And because it's, it's under this bell box and see there is a GFI and I'm going to have to, first off, I got to figure out how to pull this cover plate off. I'm not quite sure how to even, oh, I see. <laughs> you, t you take this and just pull down on it to undo that top screw, see, like that. So I'll, I'll get this off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off, and then, well, I'll talk to you about this GFI electrical outlet and whether or not I don't know if it's good one or a bad one. And I aim to find out, and I want you to check it out as well. Hey, <laughs> we just installed this, and it happens to be slightly breezy today, so hopefully. That doesn't really bother you if it, if it makes a little bit of noise while we're, we're doing this. I'm just troubleshooting this. I don't have a new GFI electrical outlet to replace this with and I still have the power on because I don't even know what breaker this is on. So I gotta be, I gotta be mindful of that. And see this cover, ah, it's not gonna go on. I'm going to have to install a new one of these gaskets, and I've got one. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to pull that off. And now, Momi was saying this wasn't working, and usually what you can do is there's a, a test button here. There's a test button right here, and then this one says reset. You're supposed to be able to press this reset button in and see. It's not, it's not pushing in and clicking. Sometimes you have to push it hard. See, it's not working. That tells me, if I can't set that, that tells me a couple things. Normally you have to have power onto your, onto your outlet before you can test that. So either the power coming up from there is not on, maybe there's a junction box down underneath the deck, and there's a wire nut that's loose or something. I see all kinds of wires in here. I really am hating to uh, start pulling on this thing, because, because I know if you don't have power to uh, a GFI, your test button, your reset button will never push in. Once you got power, then you can push that in. So just because it's not pushing in, doesn't really tell me if this uh, GFI electrical outlet is bad. And we know we know it's 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 not working because there's nothing, there's no power. And Momi, she plugged in, powered here, and I was hoping to uh, push my tester on a screw. Or something back there and I thought I might be able to see a screw where I could press push my tester on one side and the other but um, I'm gonna have to look at this a little bit more carefully and maybe I can I, I can go into the electrical panel and see if there's uh, something that says uh, electrical outlet 
a GFI deck out on the deck or something like that. Or because I really don't like to work on hot things. I mean, I could pull this out and be real careful with it. Then I could test some wires back there and uh, take it out. But I really don't like working on hot things. And I don't want you working on hot things either. Electrician, yeah, they know what they're doing. They can do it and uh, that kind of stuff. But see, if there's no, if there's no power to here, then my GFI could be good. But if I know that power is coming to here and it's hooked up properly, uh, and if this still is not working, then chances are it's a bad GFI outlet. Okay, that's the way to figure that out. Well, I'm glad I'm, I checked the uh, breakers first. I found one that happened to say deck plugs, believe it or not, but it's funny. They say deck plugs, but I only see one plug on this deck. So I'm pretty sure I have the power off. I'm going to be careful with this, as careful as I can be. Should I have Momi here in case I get electrocuted? Nah, I don't know. One way or another. I've got to get this fixed. The first thing I want to do, wow, that's a long screw, is to see if I actually have power coming up to the GFI electrical outlet. I should. I shouldn't have any issue with that. But, again, you never know. Something always goes amiss with electrical, it seems like. And this, I happen to know, goes down below. Oh, look at that. The whole box is going to come off the wall. Oh, those turkeys. I see what they did. There's an electrical outlet location on the wall. Oh, good grief. And it's packed with wires. And then they wanted to they wanted to put electrical underneath the deck, so they took the box off and they put a uh, a different box on here with the knockout added that and this whole thing screwed into the electrical uh, in the wall and uh, it's all packed with wires. Son of gun. Son of gun. Okay. But first things first. Before, and, and you know, I might not have to uh, pull it all off the wall because as, as far as I got it, there's only one black wire. This is a black wire hooked up to there. And there's the white wire hooked up over there. Now, I'm going to turn the breaker back on. Now I can test those with my tester. I'm actually hoping that the breaker, that this is bad so I don't have to troubleshoot and pull this all apart, make sure the wire nuts are uh, connected and, and there's no loose wire nuts and pull that all apart and take this box off and all that kind of stuff. Because it might just be the simplest thing is to replace this, but, but this might not be it. But if the power is coming on to this thing and if it doesn't reset that tells me it's the GFI electrical outlet okay now see if this GFI was uh, if this was not the, the only location where you wanted this GFI you could use these other wires screw holes up at the top up here on this side and this side and they got yellow on there and that's and and that means that your main power coming into here goes there and then if you had power going out of this over to another electrical outlet and another electrical outlet and another electrical outlet if you knew that you could hook that that power up to the top and this GFI electrical outlet would cover your non 
GFI electrical outlets down the line of that same circuit. You see what I mean? So you wouldn't have to necessarily, if you knew they were on the same circuit, and if you had two more electrical outlets, you wouldn't have to put a GFI here and a GFI over here if they're coming off of this same circuit. And if you knew that, you can hook it up in such a manner. And so that's why they, that's, that's why it's hooked up the way this one is. But they give you options. That's kind of slick, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna turn the power back on and we're gonna see if we've got power to that electrical outlet or not. If we don't, then we know that somewhere in the wall, hopefully there's a wire nut that's loose or something like that, okay? Oh, silly me. Before I do that, I'm gonna test it right now. I'm, I'm making the assumption that the breaker has all the power off and I'm first going to test that um, by putting it on both sides and my tester does not light up. I know there's no power to there and there shouldn't be any power to that because uh, as far as I know I've got the right breaker off. Okay so now I'm going to go back and turn the breaker on and see what happens. Ding dong, the witch is dead, the wicked witch. <laughs> okay, I got the power back on and I'm hoping beyond hope that I get power here. And I do, good. I'm, I don't know if you can see that, my, my little light down here is in fact lit up. Right there, can you see that? Okay, so that tells me that electrical outlet is not working and I was hoping that was the case because that should be an easy fix and now I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the power back off to this I could leave this all unscrewed if I if I'm going to the store the same day I can leave this all unscrewed like this if not I can screw it all back together pick up my materials do it another day you never want to leave anything out if you don't have your breaker off or whatever the other thing I need to do is look at this, and I'm not sure if they installed a 15 amp uh, GFI or a 20 amp. And the, uh, the wires are 12 gauge wires and it's on a 20 amp circuit. So that tells me, what does that tell me? That tells me this should be a 20 amp um, GFI not a 15 amp and I'm looking on the side and sure enough see right there it says 20 amp see and sometimes it's written up here and so I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna get a 20 amp because you never know what you're gonna have hooked onto the circuit don't get a 15 amp GFI if it's on a 20 amp breaker okay remember that and so I'm gonna shut that breaker back off and I don't know I'll probably screw this all back up there to the wall for now just to be just to be on the safe side get it all back up into place whatever and then I'll go to the store next time I'm around I will replace this and I'll put that I'll make that a separate video this one will be how to troubleshoot a GFI electrical outlet or something like that Look for it on my channel. And thanks for watching. And see, with the power on, this tester still will not, will not push in. And it's on the exterior of a building, and chances are it's got moisture in there and stuff, even though it was, it was under a wet location with cover closed, a bell box is what it's called. And it's extended its life expectancy 15 years outside, even with the cover. You know, expect to see issues come up. All right. That's it for now.